Okay, thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, we will call to order our Committee of the Whole and Budget E-Town meeting for tonight. Uh, I wanna thank everyone. I hate when this thing kicks on. I want to thank everyone for joining both um, in person and hopefully online as well. Tonight is our e-town hall, so an opportunity for members of the public to um, give us their feedback, ask their questions on budget, and we're going to do our best to answer as many of those questions as we are able to this evening. Um, and we'll bring back, um, question, bring back answers for questions that we may not be able to answer right away. Uh, before we start tonight, although we will formally introduce him at our next council or formal regular meeting of council, but I do want to just recognize that we have our new um, chief administrative officer, Michael Fox, with us tonight for his first meeting with council. Uh, Michael has joined us recently from the city of Lethbridge, and we are really excited to have him uh, coming to the city and uh, joining our team here, leading our team. So. Uh, Michael, I'll just let you quickly introduce yourself if you want, um, just so that the camera goes on you. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, and through the chair, I, uh, I'm very happy to be in the community. Uh, me and my wife have been here for uh, just over a week and a half, and we've been able to take in a lot of the sites and get familiar with the city. And uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to working with the community and council and administration to uh, um, move the city uh, forward uh, on some aspects of the council's strategic plan. So, thank you. Thank you. So we'll start tonight um, our meeting by recognizing that we are holding our meeting tonight on the unceded territories of the Hoopachesset and Sishot First Nations. We do have an agenda in front of us. Are there any late items to add from councillors? Seeing none, any late items from our corporate officer? None from me, thank you. Okay. And would somebody like to move approval of our agenda? Absolutely. Moved by Councillor Solda, seconded by Councillor Douglas. Not seeing any questions or comments on the motion, all in favor. Carried, thank you. And we have minutes from the meeting held at 6 p.m. on March 6th, 2023. Moved to, Move to adopt by Councillor Solda. Seconded by Councillor Mealy. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Seeing none on the motion, all in favor. Carried, thank you. We have no delegations tonight, so we'll move on to our unfinished business. And of course, our main item tonight, we have the City of Port Alberni 2023 to 2027 financial plan. I'll pass it over to our Director of Finance. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so tonight, I just wanted to uh, review uh, some high-level items uh, and, and just quickly go over a few points. Uh, with it being the E-Town Hall, it's important that we do have the public input tonight and, uh, and not really hear uh, staff speak, but we'd like to hear the input from the public tonight. So. so we started this process off back in, uh, in uh, early February as far as the financial plan. Uh, back in February, uh, on February 6th, we introduced the financial plan. Uh, we had some adjustments to the schedule with a cancellation on February the uh, 21st, but with that, uh, this is the new adjusted schedule for our anticipated uh, adoption of the financial plan for 2023-2027. So tonight is the E-Town Hall, an opportunity for the public to have input, uh, ask questions, uh, get feedback from council and staff uh, regarding the financial plan for the year. So we do have a uh, first reading with the financial plan uh, already set, uh, uh, seeking some amendments likely at the uh, next financial uh, or ne next uh, council meeting uh, to move forward and then have second reading. But with that, it, some of it, it will be administrative and uh, consolidation of some, uh, some projects. But other than that, uh, uh, we would be seeking second, uh, second reading at our next regular council meeting. The uh, financial plan is based off the 2022-2026 uh, financial plan. That's our starting starting point. Uh, so every year we, we, we move forward from that previous year's financial plan and set the, uh, set the financial plan based on what was in the prior year. With that, uh, noting that there was some cost factors included uh, in this current year that uh, weren't anticipated in the previous, including uh, some RCMP contract uh, increases uh, Transit and the Vancouver Island Regional Library. We've also seen collective agreement increases, uh, some supply management uh, issues as far as uh, as far as what we're seeing across the whole uh, whole 
whole world essentially. And, uh, and with that, we still uh, keep the current levels of service and, uh, and working within the strategic plan of the 2020 or the 2019, 2023 uh, uh, financial plan. With that, uh, we anticipate uh, council to have a new strategic plan, uh, which we'll be bringing, uh, bringing forward in the, in the coming months. So with the taxation in 2023, it's anticipated that it'd be an 8.08% increase over the year. We added another $20,000 at our last uh, regular council meeting for some Johnson lighting uh, that was undertaken uh, and, and given the amendment in the, in the past meeting. With that, the average single family residential home uh, is anticipated to be the value of uh, just over uh, $530,000. With that, the average increase for the uh, single fam family residential home is at 7.05%. Uh, so with that, you have non-market change that Im impacts the share within that class and actually dilutes the, the tax share within the residential class. So um, it is an 8.08% increase year over year for the budget, but with non-market change, it brings it down to that 7.05%. So the average uh, single family residential home would see a $152.15 increase year over year. At our last uh, regular council meeting, there was an in increase to the financial plan for a couple capital items, including the, uh, the grant pro uh, program for linking the Roger Creek trails. This increased uh, the capital plan $290,000 and $150,000 for the road assessment that would be undertaken in 2023. These are funded through the uh, Growing Communities Fund. Uh, also, there was a delay in the replacement of one asphalt uh, patch truck, and that was, uh, that, that was delayed until 2024, the IRF for, uh, for 2023. And then there was the uh, $20,000, as mentioned, that increased taxation uh, for the Upper Johnson uh, lighting installations. Capital taxation uh, is at $906,500 uh, ,906, for 2023. That includes the Roland Arts Centre, uh, strategic priorities, uh, the tree program that we undertake for 76.5, and McLean's Mill, the annual contribution for the historical assets at the site. Also city facilities across the organization, another $300,000, and the other capital projects we'd be using are uh, our reserves. So with that, uh, I hand it back over to uh, you, Madam Chair, and, uh, and, and then to the public. Thank you very much. Um, so noting that we do have, of course, the full um, financial plan available on the city's website in the agenda. And then additional to that, we do have um, our question and answer um, document that's been updated with all of councils and some of the public's questions along the way as well. Um, so before we go to questions from the public, I just want to check in with Council and see if there are any clarifications or questions that are needed to be asked at this time. Councillor Solda. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we received an email, and I don't think it got into the um, agenda at this moment, regarding fire, fire Smart budget. Could we just clarify where that is in our agenda? I think it's through the regional district, but maybe it could be clarified. Andrew, are you able to speak to Fire Smart funding? Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, the Fire Smart is coming from the ACRD. Uh, they make an application to the province uh, through the emergency uh, planning service area for the Alberni Valley, and on on and then we do uh, receive funding as they con contribute to uh, different programs within the city. Thank you very much. And now I would like to go to page 23 on in the budget here regarding park maintenance and park upgrade. So we're looking at line 27215 and 27230. So on the, um, we have a million dollars and we didn't spend about 308 at this, this year. So what happens to that money? And um, can you clarify what, when we talk about park maintenance and park upgrade, what does that mean? Because I'm looking at issues regarding our parks. If park upgrade is to upgrade our fields and that, it's only 53,000 and, and it's not very much. So I just want clarity what each one of those two things mean. 
Thank you, Andrew, if you're able to speak to the process around surplus and then the parks maintenance as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, any surplus that isn't assigned throughout the year uh, would become part of the surplus that we would use for uh, putting into reserves or other additional pro uh, projects that Council uh, would seek to undertake. Uh, it doesn't get reassigned the following year unless Council would make that direction to staff to include it. With that, uh, the items that include in the parks maintenance, that is all of our fields, uh, trails, uh, it's all rolled up within the parks maintenance budget. Uh, parks upgrading, these are specific upgrading operational costs that would be undertaken at our parks. So it's not a large budget, but there might be some minor increases. If it's capital in nature, that would come from the capital plan and would be specifically identified in, in that capital plan. Thank you. And when will we have um, the number for this year's surplus or last year's surplus? Madam Chair, with that, uh, we anticipate uh, not at the next regular council meeting, but the following to have that surplus. Uh, we are just wrapping up our year and uh, processes and reconciliation and, and our capital TCA uh, schedule. Thank you. And council, just for council's awareness, council does, of course, uh, make the decision about where that surplus is assigned. So we do have kind of a standard practice of um, putting it into reserve, um, specific reserve, but it is council's determination of where those funds go. So that will come back to us prior to this process being complete. Oh, that's Solder. great. That's great, Madam Mayor. And uh, I'm also wondering when the report on the parks, we asked for a report, I believe, on the parks, and it would be really interesting to have them hand in hand. So we would kind of connect the dots there. And also, the next question is Westport Park. We talked about maybe with the money from the government coming in. Does that need to be on a budget or is that a discussion for after the process and what we learn that we can use the money for, the criteria for that money? Is that something we need to wait for? Thank you. So I think there was two questions there. Yes. And the first one, just for clarity, was um, around the timeline for the park's master plan mm -hmm. or for the Westport Place Park report? For Actually, both would be great. Okay, Andrew. Uh, Madam Chair, with the Parks Master Plan, uh, as we go through the OCP, we are undertaking uh, in hand in hand with the OCP that, that Parks Master Plan to identify the park needs within the community. Uh, when it comes to the building or growing community uh, fund that the province had provided the, the city, the $5.2 million, we did receive a letter last week that identified what it could be used for. Uh, there is some uh, items that we're seeking clarity on as far as uh, stacking ability, but the ability for council to identify uh, capital projects for growing communities is there. Uh, we'd like to bring a report to council to identify what, uh, uh, what we could use that, that funding for. And with that, uh, we would take uh, any direction from council, understanding that we do want to seek a, a plan for those funds. Uh, you know, this is a, a great opportunity for the community to strategically use these funds in order to, uh, to really support that, that growing community uh, that we have. And with that, the intent of the province that, uh, that was made with those funds. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That ends my question and I'm looking forward to those reports. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions from council? Okay. Then with that, uh, we will go to uh, public input and question period. So at this time, members of the committee invite those in attendance and those registered as webinar participants to provide input and questions. The committee will call on those in attendance wishing to address members and will then go to webinar participants. Uh, we'll give speakers up to three minutes each to provide comments and questions in order to allow all, part all interested people to the opportunity to speak. Once everyone has had the opportunity to speak, if any people, if anyone has additional questions, we'll be happy to welcome you up again. Are there any members of the public in attendance here that would like to speak? Come on forward, Monica. And so if you don't mind when you come um, forward, if you could just uh, introduce yourself, your name and address for our records. My name is Monica R. Rose, and I live at 3981 Exton Street. I have five points that I would like to quickly go through, and then we can come back to it. And um, so we start with um, the walkway. 
um, I was there on the weekend and it was locked. And um, my opinion is that uh, just putting down a couple benches and have it open to the public every day would be wonderful so that it feels, I, I don't know why it was locked and it's not the first time it's been locked, it's been other times as well. So that's one point. Um, the park, uh, Green Grass, last year I'm new as well and I came last year and I was helping with the green grass that was put by Save on Food and um, I would like to see that finished. And um, I'm happy to help. So if you're wondering what my qualifications is, I'm an interior designer, but I also have a silver award in, in making one of the gardens in a competition. So um, I know what was talked, and I know I found a sculpture, and I would ha be happy to get the sculpture on that land and just finish it up. It doesn't need, the only thing I would need is actually some help, some manpower, and utilize what we already got and go from there. It won't take very much and we could finish it up and let people enjoy that place. Um, then about the blue economy, and um, there was the two ships, Navy ships, that came and visited the city. Now, there would have been a third ship as well from America coming here, but they couldn't come because of the three birds are not viable or two are condemned. So what I would like to see that the city would work with Port Authority and other um, uh, uh, levels as well, see that um, um, two more, I mean the two condemned birds would be updated and also the one of the birds should have a scanner so it's up to date so we can start bringing cargo in right away. So that is, for some reason, has not been updated. So that, that is just, we could immediately bring cargo is, if we have it. Um, and then um, another thing is the, the dry dock. I read about that in the newspaper. And I'd just like you to know that there is all over the world dry docks viable for sale. You can just buy it and bring it here and you could start immediately work if you wish. So there is some quick ways you could get the port going right away. So the, these are the comments and also um, about the roads. Um, I would love to see the roads being paved. For example, I do know that you've been doing, you know, plumbing. And, uh, but when the plumbing is done, why not take that whole street and um, pave it afterwards so that slowly the city starts looking neat and tidy again? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Monica. Um, and just wanted to, on one of those points, firstly, thank you for letting us know about the gates being locked at SOMAS. The intent okay. is that um, that walkway, that portion of the walkway is open um, daylight seven days a week. So um, mm. it, it shouldn't be locked. Oh. Um, and I did want to just let, so thank you for that. We will follow up. Um, and I did just want to let you know as well that um, currently uh, we do have out to tender some improvements or going out to tender some improvements for that section of the walkway so that there will be hopefully benches and just the ability for people to be able to enjoy it more. Great. So thanks for okay. that. Okay. Okay. Any more? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank no, you, thank Monica. You. Appreciate it. Okay. Questions or comments from other members of the public? Okay, come on forward. And again, if you don't mind, just uh, introducing yourself with your name and address to start. So my name is Alexandra Prushinska and I live on 4560 Bird Street. Um, so I'm new to town. Yeah. I <laughs> Thank you. Just one year, less than you. Um, but my background is in public health and I 
I have no clue about budgets, but you know, I was told in school that this is a thing you should look at. So I'm just interested why there is 71% decrease for the youth activities, having in mind that you know, on the wall it says that recreation is important and having in mind the mental health crisis and the opportunities for kids to draw into unnecessary activities like drugs and alcohol that are abandoned in this town. So I'm just wondering why, as terms of prevention, there's no increase. Instead, there is a big decrease, and I'm sure there is a rationale. I don't know the demographics of the town. Is it, you know, is there 71% decrease? Like, I'm just really wondering what's the rationale. Thank you so much for that. Um, Andrew, are you able to um, highlight a few of the numbers in the budget? I'm not clear, I guess, on, on what line item where it was 71% uh, decrease in the budget for uh, programming. Uh, I know that uh, with the, the changes in, in, in format, possibly, that some items may look like they go down as far as uh, uh, youth services and programs. There was, there was a decrease. I think we uh, identified some of the programming at, at Gyro that was not being utilized this year. Is it, is one, so I, I see that there, the 71.93% decrease. Uh, but as far as the other programming that we do provide, uh, we've increased the, the programming in other areas uh, for uh, youth and children, and then we're, we're doing a, a, like trying to identify different items that we can do to provide service to the community. So understanding with the tight budget that we have this current year, and understanding what we could do undertake, uh, the programming staff are, are looking at ways to provide programs to the community, but uh, there was a decrease in that one line item, yes. Thank you, so it sounds like, if I'm understanding correctly, a decrease in a specific line item for youth. However, there were increases in overall youth programs. Um, and I'll just add from a, a council perspective outside of any specific budget line, um, we have been um, working with a, a group in the community who is trying to really actively look at some of the challenges that we have with youth right now in the community and um, look at ways to proactively invest, um, coming together collaboratively along around with all levels of government. Um, our CMP school district as well, um, Sushat and Hupachasset have been really involved in that work with us as well. Um, and we're looking for funds right now to put together a comprehensive youth strategy uh, because we really, uh, appreciate um, that there for a long time has not been significant investments in youth um, in this community and, and a lot of our, our focus on kind of services and programs um, has been uh, more focused toward seniors so um, we're really proud of the seniors programs that we have in the community but there definitely are some gaps in youth programs so um, we've got a very energetic and fantastic uh, manager of recreation who is always bringing forward new ideas for uh, youth programs um, but additional to that, we're looking outside of sort of the standard programs at, at how we can um, invest in a youth strategy because um, we're recognizing how important that is right now. And Councillor Haggard um, has been kind of heading that at the regional district as well. So thanks for the question. Okay, Councillor Haggard. Madam Mayor, speaking of youth, I see some young adults here tonight. Thank you for coming. And I was wondering if you had any questions or comments that you want to come up and ask council. Uh, I am Clarissa Liger, uh, 2123 Motion Drive. Um, I'm a part of the softball association as both an umpire and a player. Um, and I wanted to talk about the uh, conditions of our minor softball fields. Um, they're severely water damaged and many injuries have like, happened because of it, um, including broken legs, rolled ankles, and uh, more. Um, and I think it would be a good idea to get those fixed. I know there's a budget, but uh, it's very important to all age groups that these fields are fixed because they're just so damaged. And um, even Nanaimo fields, uh, they host training camps and clinics and such. 
with the same conditions such as weather, um, and they're fully functional, unlike many of our fields. Yeah. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, and just wanted to uh, thank you for coming forward. Um, also let you know that at our last um, council meeting, council did request um, a report from staff on um, the kind of highest in need fields um, in the community with a focus specifically um, on youth softball fields um, because we've heard from several members of, um, of the softball association who are expressing the same thing. So you'll probably be aware that we are investing in three fields this year and they're not softball fields. Um, so we've asked to put money into next year's budget um, and going forward in future year's budgets. Um, but we've asked staff really what the top kind of priorities are and um, asked that that look at softball fields first. So Councillor Dame made that motion at our, our last meeting, I believe, and um, hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll get some information back where we're able to put money into the budget for next year to start to do that work. So thanks for coming forward. Are there other members of the public who would like to ask a question or speak? Mandy. Uh, Randy Fraser, 6115 Oxford Street. Um, in the budget, you've got 650,000 for the SOMAS Mill Redevelopment Fund. Is, I'm wondering, could you, is there an opportunity to expand or develop or what the scope of that work will be for that money? Do we know? Thank you. Yes, we do know. Um, Andrew, can you speak to that? So, Madam Chair, with the uh, planned activities, we do have the security that we're undertaking at the site. Uh, there's remediation. We have a grant application in for doing some remediation on the site. Our development, uh, uh, seeking a development partner, so the consulting fees that we uh, are associated with that, and uh, possibly uh, selling uh, some items or cleaning up some buildings to enable the uh, uh, potential... Uh, Certificate of Compliance once we do uh, complete some remediation on the site. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, I have a few questions. I won't. Um, at the end of last year, you advertised uh, for a project management services for the demolition of the site, and it was awarded, but I may have missed it. Do we, who was that awarded to and for how much? I believe it was $100,000 to Bowerman. Andrew? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, off the top of my head, I can't recall the exact amount for that, that award, but it was to Bowerman uh, Construction Limited, and uh, it's on an as-needed basis uh, for project management. So, And that would be part of that $650,000 total budget? That'd be correct, yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to, I'll ask, I got a few more questions, but I'll only ask one more this time. Um, I noticed Johnson Road, uh, the... Uh, they're going to install some lighting along the boulevard up there, which is great. And I've asked this question before. Why are we not putting banners up in the city anymore? Other than the Rotary Club doing the Arts District, Johnson Road is barren with empty armor ba arm, banner arms. Um, I mean, it's a, we're probably one of the few communities that doesn't put up banners in the summertime that advertises the city. It's the main road through. They're not super expensive. I don't know why we haven't had them since 2017. So I'm just wondering why, there, why are we not putting banners up on Johnson Road? Thanks for that suggestion. Um, I'm not sure, Andrew, if you have that information or if we would have to ask our Director of Parks and Rec. Madam Chair, I don't have specifics on, on a banner program or any, any costing or any other details, so it'd be best to have the uh, Director ask, uh, answer that at, at a later time. I said Thank the last you. time they were up was 2017. Yeah, and I do recall um, in 2017, um, I, I do recall um, yeah. a request coming from the Parks and Rec Department at that point for um, funding for that banner program. Uh, it was funded from council at that time. It wasn't a lot of money. And I actually remember asking the question, is this something the city typically funds? And our director of Parks and Rec at that time, which was Teresa Kingston, said, mm -hmm. it's actually not typically a city expense. We're being asked to fund it on kind of a one-time basis. Um, so it was an out of the norm expense at that time, um, but I think it's a great suggestion of something we can look at. And um, Andrew, if you don't mind just adding that as to our Q and A document, and we can bring back information on that. I agree, it's a it's probably a reasonably low cost way to promote our community and improve the first impression coming down Johnson yeah. Road. So thank you. I can do a little history here since I have some insight. 
Um, Jean McIntosh was the one who always did the banners and she was very successful at getting them and sometimes some funding for them, but they were, the parks, I mean, the museum bought them, managed them, public works installed them. And we had many different ones you know, over the years, you've seen them all about the mill, the bombers, First, First Nations art and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I think we should be putting them back up. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, are there other members of the public who would like to speak today? Roland. Roland Smith, 2702 11th. Just, um, Madam Chair, a point of uh, order I'm curious about. I've been attending meetings regularly and we started to go down a path where people didn't have to give their addresses. Just, and, and I'm noticing that on the council agendas, first names are redacted, addresses are redacted. And now we've gone back to, we're gonna give our name and address. So again, trying to understand what the process is so it's consistent and everybody understands it. What's the process? Let's start there. Sure. Um, so our procedures by law has not changed. Um, name and address is still required. However, I think we have all uh, agreed in a friendly way that it probably is outdated and not necessary. So uh, my approach never changed. When people come to the podium, I always say, if you could state your name and address. However, um, if somebody chooses to state the road that they live on or say, resident of Port Alberni, um, I'm not stopping them today and I haven't stopped them from speaking in the past. So I would say we're trying to be consistent in that, but you can look forward to probably an update on our procedures bylaw regarding that. Okay, and I don't have a problem myself, but it's just that what's the consistency. So if I may circle back to the young lady uh, uh, who is just up for, for a softball, if I may ask Madam Chair through to her I, how much ball she's played in the last three or so years, Reflecting that, I know I've got friends who, uh, who have an, uh, he's, he's 12 now. He lost two seasons that I know of because of the pandemic. So if she hasn't played a lot of ball, and this council's asking youth that weren't able to play ball for two or three years because of COVID, they're not youth forever. They're growing up. And I think the council needs to make a commitment here and now to put some more money in the budget and get these kids back into activities that they lost out on. So... Yeah, thank you. And I was actually going to ask um, for kind of a recall of what our specific motion was from last meeting, because I believe we actually did direct money to be put into the budget for um, the following, like next year and the years after. Um, we just weren't sure on what the exact amount should be. So we're waiting on staff to let us know that, um, or we asked for requested a staff report for that. However, you'll know that uh, money is already in the budget to improve fields this year. Um, we are not contemplating at this point adding another $250,000 approximately or whatever is needed um, because we don't have that number yet. Um, uh, we're not uh, contemplating adding any more money for this year to the budget. So the next best thing we can do is do that work next year and have it scheduled to be done next year. Okay, as a follow-up, Madam Chair, um, the Director of Finance, I think indicated at his opening remarks for the average home it's 150 odd dollars a year, is that correct, Director? Or thereabouts? A increase? Andrew? Madam Chair, it, I think it was $152 yeah. and some cents. So it's $150, close enough. So $12.50 a month uh, for the average homeowner. Um, and 250 would be, what, about 0.8% of a tax increase, something like that, or closer to 1%. So I, I still think, I mean, this room isn't crowded with people that are protesting the current budget. I think you should be acting on that, putting that money in the plan this year, not talk about doing it next year. Thank you for that input. We rarely get people ask us to increase the budget, so appreciate that, Roland. Um, that absolutely is something that council can direct for this year. We also do have the Growing Communities Fund that potentially could be looked at for this. I would highlight that the one issue right now is we do not have a scope of work. Um, so we can direct that money be put in, we can estimate it, but we are we are making up a number. Um, so we do still have time. We could direct staff to bring us back a number for this year's budget, um, it, but we can't necessarily add money in today when we have no idea what the amount of money is. Councillor Haggard. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. That was going to be my thought, Roland, is that we do have money coming in for the Growing Communities Fund. And then I was going to suggest as part of that plan is to put money aside to upgrade all our fields to the standard that they need to be. Instead of putting in taxation, we could take it out of this money. And that way we could see tangible results very quickly for the community. Thank you. Councillor Solda. And Madam Mayor, we do we are waiting for a report to come back on our ball fields, as mm -hmm. stated earlier. And we have surplus that we're waiting for a report to come back to us. So there's that money there that we were talking about just earlier. So um, that'll be at the next meeting, I'm presuming. Thank you. And I'll just add that if anyone in council does want to make a motion, we can make a recommendation to council. We can't, we can pass it today, but it has to be approved by council at our next meeting. Um, I think the appropriate motion might be um, that we ask staff for a budget figure or a plan that would facilitate uh, improvements to softball fields this year. Madam Mayor, I'll move that motion you just made. I'll second that motion. Thank you. So just a reminder, it is a, a recommendation to council and passing it right now uh, doesn't actually change our budget or put anything in, but rather brings it to the next council meeting. And then staff will bring us numbers that we need to be able to properly consider. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any, uh, Councillor Patola. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would uh, suggest that we don't respond emotionally to a situation where we pick off one project or the next project or the next project that has uh, interest of any particular group. That doesn't demean the importance of those projects or the importance of those groups in our community. But uh, as you've stated, Madam Mayor, we have a request out for a report to understand fully the context of the situation with regards to not only the ball fields, but parks in general. And we are also expecting a planning report uh, with regards to the Growing Communities Fund and a f full comprehensive approach to the use of those monies. I see uh, in my absence when I was on Zoom that some of those monies are already being spent and this would be yet another nickel and dime as it were in the tune of $250,000 uh, away from those funds. And I think those funds um, have the potential to have significant impact into this community. And we should make sure that we look at all of the opportunity costs of using those funds before we just um, wantonly assign them without any facts to a specific program. Thank you, Councillor Patola. And the only uh, thing that I would like to clarify is it was not in your absence while you were on Zoom because you were a part of the meeting um, and, of course, required to vote on Zoom. But um, I certainly do take your point otherwise. Councillor Solda and then Councillor Mealy. I just want to add that it's a recommendation that we just made, a motion, and it's going to go back to a regular meeting. And we're still going to get a report on the surplus funds. It doesn't necessarily have to come out of the, the money that we received from the government. And we are also gonna get a report and then we can make a decision, yes or no, at that time, what we wanna do and clarify that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mealy. Thank you, Madam Mayor, I appreciate that. I think, I think overall, I think we all want the work to get done. We want our youth back on the fields. They've come multiple times now to our meetings to. To, to air their uh, issues with the fields. And they were great at one time. They were unbelievable at one time. And yeah, now I wouldn't want to go out there and break a leg. I mean, especially at an advanced age now. Um, but I do want to do it right. And I, I concur with Council Bertola. And I especially if we're going to have, not next meeting, but the meeting after that where we get our surplus information, I'd like to at least wait for that and then make sure we know where the money's coming from. Um, if anything, I would love the provincial government and our surplus to pay for it so we don't have to increase taxation and just get it done. That's what the grant money's there for. It should be for existing infrastructure for, for youth and stuff like that rather than maybe other projects. I mean, these are the, these are the this is why the money's coming our way. So I'm, I'd love to wait for the report at least. That's what I'd like to do. Thank you, and uh, I'll just add that, that that it is what the money is for. Um, so while we want to plan it and take you know a comprehensive look at long-term approach of what we want to use it for, um, this type of program, project is spe was specifically outlined in the letter. So you know it is for this type of infrastructure for sure. Um, I think what I'm hearing from council is there's certainly a desire to get the work done. 
And there's probably multiple ways that it could get done. So the Growing Communities Fund, absolutely, possibly the surplus, possibly uh, Parks and Rec Reserve. There's other options um, that we may not have considered. Um, and we don't necessarily have to decide where that, those funds come from. I think what we need is information from staff on the scope of work that needs to get done because we don't have that yet. So we're speculating based on what we're hearing from the public and this, you know, the condition of the fields, but we don't actually know the work that needs to get done. We need to make sure that staff knows the work that needs to get done so that they um, can actually do it this year. Um, and we need a budget. So I don't think that this motion actually um, conflicts with getting a report on the Growing Communities Fund or getting, um, you know, adding money to the budget for future years for field repairs. Um, I think that this is, is just an indicator that um, council is considering prioritizing this work. Um, and I don't think it conflicts with any of the other things that we're waiting on. So I think we can pass this motion, um, recognizing that we all want to see this work done, whether uh, this year or next year, and maybe council hasn't collectively decided yet on wh in which year, but we do want to get the work done. Um, it will give us the information that we need to make a decision prior to the end of this budget period. Um, doesn't commit us yet to doing it, but rather gives us the information we need. Councillor Mead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just one more then, um, and of course, who would know best than the users? So I would love the uh, Legere family to be contacted by staff. They have a pretty good idea what's needed up in the field. I've gone up there, I've seen it. Yeah, there's some drainage that's been been absolutely flooded with dirt and rocks and the super suckers got to go up there and take care of it. So, but they're well aware of the situation. So rather than reinvent the wheel, I know staff would be probably, uh, it'd probably be a positive if they reached out to the Legere's at some point. Thank you. For sure, thank you. Okay, oh, Councillor Dame. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I would just like to uh, say um, through you uh, to uh, the Laguerre family and uh, Claire, thank you very much. You did a really good job. It's, uh, it's intimidating coming up here, I'm sure. So good job. Um, uh, the, the purpose behind the motion last week and the discussion surrounding it was to, to um, explore the possibility of expediting this. We, we want to see this happen fast, soon. Um, I've, I've spent considerable time speaking with different representatives um, from, from your group and uh, we agree with you. Um, we're just looking into how best to make this happen. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to let you know that we're, we're, on, your, we're on your side here. So we, we hear you and we appreciate it. Thank you. And we don't normally take uh, public input during um, kind of a discussion, but because this is a committee of the whole, and I did see a hand up uh, that I think is relevant, um, if you would like to come forward before we vote, um, you're more than welcome to speak. And we'll just follow the same um, process if you want to introduce yourself with your name and address, and we'll give you up to three minutes to speak. So I'm Sylvie Laguerre. I'm at 2123 Motion Drive. So I just wanted to kind of add a little bit more. I know we've got our little softball army here. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to kind of, you know, clarify some of the things. Um, each year we've been really lucky because our registrations have been increasing. Um, this year it looks like we're beating yet another record. So very exciting. Um, but it's very worrisome right now because if we even just drive by the fields, there isn't one that is usable. Um, like Claire said, you know, she's been going to camps. Um, in the Nanaimo fields, our rep teams have been playing out of Lady Smith because our fields aren't usable. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're reaching 242 kids. We have hosted provincials every year except for COVID year. That is looking at about a thousand people coming to our community. That's using our hotels, our restaurants. We bring in a lot of people. This year, we opted after complaints of our provincials from last year we were not going to host this year. So it's worrisome because we want to grow. And right now our biggest obstacle is the shape of the fields. And even looking at our season starts in 27 days. And it's really worrisome because last year um, we canceled, I would say about 60% of our practices. Within about probably the first month we had over 40 people asking for refunds because it wasn't looking like we were going to be able to operate. So it's really scary. We're seeing a lot of those kids not coming back. We're trying to bring in kids. Um, we actually have kids coming from the West Coast, Nitnat, that are coming to join for our programs. It's terrifying to us because, like I said right now, we don't have a usable field. How do we keep growing if we don't have those opportunities for these kids? 
We talk about injuries. I've got two girls here who suffered some pretty major injuries last year. We want the kids to be able to play, but we want them to be able to play safe. So that is, I just wanted to put that out there because it is a priority for this year because it's scary that we may not be able to have a season the way things are looking right now. With minor maintenance, we may be able to push it for next year, but we definitely need some repairs in order for us to even start our season next month. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Councillor Patola. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Ms. Lear. Yes. Uh, just uh, two questions. Um, so first of all, uh, totally support sport. It's, <laughs> it's the thing that we should primarily be pursuing for our um, young members of our society. Uh, and, and that certainly includes the notion of competition with other communities as well. I am wondering, out of the 242 uh, registrants that you have, do you have any knowledge or, or indication how many of those individuals are from the city and how many are from other areas? I apologize, I don't have those numbers prepared. I would say I know of only about two kids from Parksville. Um, are you talking about the ACRD? ACRD. Outside, outside city limits? Or are you talking Correct. Outside of, outside of city limits. I would say a safe estimate, at least 85% of the kids registered are in the city of Port Alberni. Um, I can get those exact no. numbers to council. Uh, I do have all the stats just uh, I'm, not I'm sure you do. You're in, you're, <laughs> you're in softball. I wouldn't expect you to have anything other than stats. Um, no, that, that, that's fine. I just wanted a general idea. And, and uh, just uh, as I am not a softball player myself, do you ever utilize or have access to or have games on fields that are outside of the city limits? Well, I will say our rep teams last fall um, played out of Lady Smith. They still represented Alberni Valley, but our fields were not usable. Um, but other than that, we, we practice at the Athletic Hall in the winter months. We would love to be outside, um, but right now we don't have anywhere to practice other than the Athletic Hall. Sorry, maybe I wasn't clear. Oh, are, 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 there any, are there any fields in the ACRD or Tofino or Euclid or any of the other municipalities that are included in the ACRD that you utilize? No, we use the four major fields. Um, and the two Sweeney's, uh, major, the major one, major two, and because of our increase of registration, we are hoping to use two of the Russell fields this year. Those are the only fields we use. Thank you very much. Sorry, my apologies. No, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Solda. Just a quick question. Are there any fields in the ACRD that you can use? I don't think there is. Nope. Is there? I uh, didn't think. There's one. One? Um, That, uh, that we're looking into actually trying to get the First Nations to uh, help donate so that they can they can use this field. Now, I've never personally used this field. I know I'm not 100% sure of exact exact whereabouts, but I know it's it's out towards the T-Shap market that way. I believe. There's one. I apologize, the mayor. There's one up by Hopiak School. That's, That's and I've we played there and yes. yeah, so yeah, it's it's right. But we're there. trying to actually get them to make that playable for for our rep teams or for any teams that are willing to travel that distance to play. But we try to keep it right next to our clubhouse. And the only reason I'm asking that question, because I didn't think there was very many in the ACRD comparing to what we have to offer. We used okay. to have a couple of school fields. Okay. Yeah, but those are Thank gone. you. Okay, thank you. I don't want to get too far off topic on the motion, uh, which is just effectively to expedite a report that we've already asked for. Um, I think there's clarity from um, council on this and, and probably some unanimity. Um, and I think staff is going to have an understand of what we're, uh, understanding of what we're looking for here, which is really just more information to be able to uh, make a decision on whether or not we can expedite this and how to best go about that. So I'm um, going to call the question on the motion. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Um, so for members of the public who are watching, this is just um, to get uh, to bring to council a recommendation um, to expedite this report, which will give us the information we need to make a decision. So not a decision to move forward at this point, but um, some intent from council to be able to. Councillor Patola, I saw your hand. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I'm sure there's still some questions from the um, 
from the public gallery. I just wanted to bring a motion, I guess it's just a motion again, to refer to council from committee that uh, any such report with regards to the spending of the building community funds could include uh, a copy of the letter and any explanations that staff have received with regards to clarification of that letter. Thank you. The letter will um, be included on our next council agenda. Um, so members of council will have access to that. Um, is there a seconder for that motion? Okay. Any comments? Discussion? Okay, seeing none on the motion, all in favor? Carried. Any opposed? Carried, thank you. Okay, Councillor Douglas. Just while the Laguerre family's still here, I was just wondering, like we're talking about a budget, and I, I know we need to stick to that, but it strikes me that, uh, you know, the budget issues we're talking about are more long-term. Um, it's gonna take a while for the money to arrive, the work to be done, and like occurred to me that this family is has a more immediate deadline of an activity that I believe is happening within the next month or two, is that right? So I'm just wondering if there's some way we can just deviate for the budget from a, a second or two and um, send something to council again to see if there is an immediate uh, way we can rectify at least some of their issues prior to the beginning of their event that they're talking about. I would just suggest that our CAO is here. Our Director of Parks, Recreation, mm -hmm. and Heritage is not here, so we can't get any further information tonight, but I think the conversation here has been very clear, and I think our <laughs> CAO is going to uh, yeah, reach out to really our good. Director of Parks, Recreation, okay. and Heritage to it see is. what can be done um, in 27 days. That's I don't true. think that we need to make any further motions on it because getting the fields operational is yeah. outside of a capital Great. budget okay. no, requirement. Great, okay, no, that's what I was after, thank you. Okay, Quite, sorry, uh, Randy, you've already spoken. Um, so I will call on you once we go through the rest of um, the people and anyone online who would like to speak. Are there other members of the public in attendance who would like to speak today? It's a parade, I'm sorry. <laughs> so my name's Ted Laguerre, 2123 Motion Drive. Uh, I had a question. Um, who's undertaking the, the field condition report that you're requiring to ask for? The Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage. Um, she may not do it herself, but she would be the director who we've asked for it. Um, and she would determine Lula? which member of staff will do that. Okay. Um, so I've actually had uh, this conversation multiple times with a couple of different heads of, uh, I believe Goudreau was one, uh, Rob. I believe his first name was. And uh, the last one was Amy Needham. And she had a head guy, Lanar, I believe, was another one. So I've had this conversation a few times and we actually brought in a third party source who specializes in building fields. And we've had quotes done and we've had uh, him walk the fields with us. And we've had him explain to us where we've gone wrong with what we're doing to our fields. I've brought some of these concerns up to Willa. Um, I don't know if this is something that you guys are gonna move forward on, on to help maintain the fields, but like just for instance, um, irrigation on the fields, pulling plugs and putting top dressing in, which is the, the sand, right? That's, that part helps your, your grass not become mush. And the main complaint I'm hearing from Parks and Rec every time we ask for their help this time of year is we can't get our machines on the field because the grass is too soft. Well, you know what? I've never seen aeration on that field in over four years. Um, I play out of town quite a bit and I've seen it on every other field just while I'm there and I'm here every day. So, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's something we need to do just for maintenance. Um, uh, but yeah, if in the 27 days to start, I mean, I know there's, there's no miracles that we're gonna be able to do to get these fields in tip top shape, but I can definitely say, as Charles had once said there, people came here and looked at our fields and were like, man, you guys have the best fields ever. And, and it was no joke, there was, it was, there was tops, but in my eight years dealing with softball, I haven't seen the city or, or anyone for that matter put any sort of material on our fields. 
And that's something that you'll see every association in every district on every field that maintains their fields will top it up. It causes hazards and stuff like that too, but here nor there. My, my main concern is, is what can we do to get it done? And I know it's tough for budgets and city you guys can't just pull money out of places and be like, let's do it. <laughs> It'd be nice. But I'm looking at other avenues with funds and, and uh, uh, grants and stuff like that. So if I'm able to pull this money from places and if I'm able to, to get this specialist to come out and help, can I rely on the city works to come in and do the work and put their best foot forward to make sure it gets done? Is that something I can ask upon you guys? We can't give that kind of uh, commitment without the information in front of us. But that yeah. said, um, just appreciating your comments. Um, and it's good to know. So council has not been um, aware of this issue until um, it started coming forward from members of your association yeah, um, about six months ago. So um, we're, I, I think toward the end of last summer it was. Um, but good to know that some of those kind of, some of the planning has been done um, mm -hmm. and some of the assessments have been done. Um, the best thing for you to do at this point is to leave it with us. We have a new CAO here who's going to follow up with our director. Um, we don't have the operational details here and we don't have our operational expert in the room to be able to provide any further information or to make any commitments. Um, but I would tell you that um, council is committed to getting these fields fixed and in playing Absolutely. shape. Absolutely. No, I just yeah. I was just curious because if I put forth a letter looking for donations and sponsorships to, to revamp our fields, um, if I could announce that, hey, you know, like cutting costs down, the city is willing to do the work too. But I need to be able to put that in those letters before I send them out. That's all. I think after a conversation with um, our CAO and director, they yep. can connect with you. Council doesn't need to authorize that. So no, for sure, this is this I, is our sorry. I, I, this is our new um, CAO, Mike Fox. Um, Mike Fox. He yeah. will probably reach out to you. Um, we can't give that commitment of staff's time today. We don't know if there's already an existing plan in place for the field. So we don't want to um, yeah. you know, overlap on work that may have already been done that we're not aware of. Um, the best course of action for you is to make that connection with Mike. For Perfect. Mike and Willa to loop you into the conversation, and then if there is a you know put out kind of a request for fundraising or materials or whatever is needed, mm -hmm. um, Mike could make that commitment that yes, staff um, will undertake that work if we get the materials. So I'm not trying to shut down the idea that you've brought forward. I think no. it's great. It's just we don't have that information um, to make that decision here today. Because we, uh, we do have a small piggy bank that we have with you guys still from just trying to put forth to fixing our, all those fields, but. But we definitely want to to work with you guys and, and get her done. So, thank you. So, Mike Fox, I can figure out a contact with you. We can do email or something. That works so perfect. His email what, what should be position? on his. Sorry? So he's our our chief admi chief administrative officer. Um, okay. His email is on the city's website. But if you leave your contact information um, with Danielle, if we don't have it already, then Danielle perfect. can connect the two of you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there other members of the public in attendance tonight who would like to speak? Okay, uh, then on online, Danielle. So just a reminder for those attending on the Zoom web webinar, um, if you would like to participate in um, speaking directly to council, please click raise hand in the webinar controls and we will allow you to speak and if you would prefer, there is also the option to type your question into the question and answer box um, at the bottom of the screen. So feel free to participate that way. Okay, and do we have no questions currently online? Nothing currently online, Madam Mayor. Um, but I do have a couple submissions. Um, I can either read aloud, they have been provided to council. Um, I do believe one of our, the main um, question came from somebody who is attending on the E-Town Hall, uh, but I can speak to those. Sure, if you want to either read or summarize those, and then we'll, if we don't have any more questions online, we'll go to um, members of the public in attendance tonight for a second. So several comments and questions uh, regarding trail development. Comment, 
The 2022 and prior year's capital projects and approved budgets include three projects, Connect the Keys, Linking Roger Creek Trail, and Victoria Key Millstone Park Connector Footbridge. Also in the 2023 capital project plan is an item linking Roger Creek Trails with a total cost estimate of $725,978. Question one, am I correct that the above budgets will complete the trail walkway path from Victoria Key the Pemberton and Gertrude intersection improvements, the improved path in Roger Park, and the connection to Scott Kenny Trail. Plus, we'll build a trail from Roger Park to Roger Street along the railway track. Question two. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I uh, sorry. Time. Yeah. Could I just clarify first? Um, I Just because we didn't introduce who it was from, is, it, is that Bob Canegeezer's yes. questions? Thank yeah, you. Sorry. Um, Andrew, are you able to answer that first question? We've got our oh. Oh, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Director of Engineering. The answer is yes. Thank you for that. Question two. <laughs> Question two. Will there be directional signs placed along Rogers Street to guide pedestrians to or from Victoria Key to close this loop trail? Thank you. Um, so I think I can answer that, that um, the key to key or connect the keys project um, and the Roger Creek connector project both um, did originally envision signage. And I don't believe that signage has been designed yet. Um, I do know that we are, um, that we have a, a committee struck with Sashat and Hupacheset and the city um, talking about opportunities to incorporate um, First Nations language um, and historical spaces into some of that directional signage um, and informational signage along the way. So that's a, a work in progress, but certainly is a piece of the projects. Question three. At a previous council meeting, plans were shown for a path to connect Harbour Key to Tai Landing in the vicinity of the train station, railway tracks, and Fisherman's Harbour. Is this project anywhere in the capital planning for 2023 and beyond? Thank you. So um, I believe that project uh, was approved to go to tender um, last council meeting, not in the 2023 capital plan because it was already funded um, through grants and previous contributions to the Key to Key path. Thank you. Question four. With these new trail plans and the existing trails in the city, where in the operating budget is the necessary increased budget allocation to maintain these trails? Should the city not be prepared to maintain the planned and existing trails? Do not build more. Thank you. Andrew, do you want to speak to the increases in the parks recreation uh, maintenance staff? Madam Chair, within the financial plan, uh, these increases in the, in the, in the cost to uh, support the additional trails would be coming through the uh, parks maintenance budget. Thank you. And if I'm correct in remembering, we are adding a position to that this year, and we added a charge hand position last year as well, recognizing the commitments to trail maintenance. That is correct. Thank you. Danielle, did you want to, was there a, an additional piece of correspondence? Through you, Madam Mayor. It was also from uh, Bob Kangeser as well. Um, so there are still a couple comments, I think, remaining. Um, if you want to hold off on those, we can loop back. There's nothing, or there, we do have one person in attendance raising their hand now to speak. Hi, Pat, you should be able to speak now. Oh, great, thank you. Um, and I just uh, love to be able to be a part of uh, listening to the budget. I'm very interested. Um, my name is Pat Ribbons and I'm at 195555 Grandview Road. Um, I was just looking through the budget on page 21, I guess line 64. It's the train station seismic upgrade and that's for $860,000. I'm just wondering what is, the, I, I'm not sure of the reasoning behind upgrading that building at this point. What is, the, what is that going to be, uh, the use of that building going to you know, be um, once it's 
upgraded? Are we going to rent it out? Are we selling it? What's happening with that? Thank you so much, Pat, for the question. Um, so I just wanted to clarify first off that um, it says $860,000. We did actually receive a four hundred or just under $400,000 um, grant from the province for that. Um, so a lot of that project cost was um, covered by the province. Um, but our intent with that building is to rent it out. Um, last year, we did go through a request for expressions of interest. Um, and we did receive submissions um, from proponents who wanted to convert that building for a variety of uses. Um, council has chosen um, a tentative um, preferred candidate and um, the city is in negotiations with that candidate. And I believe we're hoping to be able to release that information um, very soon, um, but we are not quite um, secure on that decision yet. So um, hopefully in the very near future, uh, we will be able to announce that we've um, come to an agreement, but we did go through a process. We did receive submissions and we are intending to, to lease that building out. We're not considering um, selling it. And Pat, if you have an additional question, you're welcome to ask. Um, well, is that for, now the, the candidate that, you know, is going to, uh, be in that building, is that uh, like a, would that be a retail type of situation? Would it be a community situation? Uh, we're not able to speak to um, what it was or, um, or what it is yet because um, it is confidential until we come to an agreement with that proponent, but we um, left that open to whatever the public um, wanted to submit for there. Um, so we did receive a variety of responses and um, we did put in a couple specific restrictions or requirements that um, the successful proponent needed to be willing to sell train tickets if the train came back to that location. Um, and there was a lot of requirements around maintaining the heritage of that building as it is our, our sole heritage building in the city of Port Alberni. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. I think you're our first uh, ever possibly member of the public zooming into an e-town hall meeting. So um, thanks for asking your questions. We could hear you really clearly and that seemed to work well. Okay, Danielle, do we, have, do we have other members of the public on that would like to ask a question? Not yet. Thank you. Then we will go to members of the public who would like to speak again. Um, and I'll go to Randy and then Monica second. I'll, I'll just comment because um, I, what I wanted to talk about um, was spoken by the softball people is how the ball fields here were the envy of people who played on them. So it raised the question of how did things get to such disrepair? Is it the lack of funding, the lack of staff? You know, those are the serious questions of how did we get to this position? And ideally, hopefully we can fix it. Um, now, my questions <laughs> is um, in the budget, there's, there's more money for um, third and Redford controller, uh, the traffic controller down there. Um, not always is it the controller, lots of times it's the loops. But it, um, I noticed that the pedestrian crossing at 11th and Redford has been damaged in the past on the north side. It's been hit a number of times. It's just dangling there, and it's still dangling there. And it's almost been a year since it's been not operating properly up there. So that's something I think that probably should be looked at. And now with the key to key projects, um, last year you, um, PWL, they did tender a section you know, from the Harbor Key to the Somas Mill. Is that same plan being used going forward? Uh, Rob, are you able to answer that question? We've actually modified that plan looking at potential cost savings after we tendered that. It is one of the- Thank you, Rob. Randy, if you could just make sure you are at the microphone oh, when you speak sorry. for members of the public oh, who are outside of the room. Yeah, my question was because in that, unless you read the, looked at the plan and the details, uh, the, the lighting that's on the south side of Harbor Key along there is this, is this uh, cement poles. Their plan called for replacing them with new ones. Are you, in other words, why would you replace the existing ones that are there, right? Is that still in the plan? Go ahead, Rob. That is still in the plan. Um, one of the reasons for that is from an electrical perspective, that's quite the old infrastructure, as well as we've looked at poles, similar poles like that, and they start from the uh, cold, wet, 
and, and sun and everything else, you end up topping them where the top couple of feet will fall off at some point. So just in the best interest of safety, we'll replace them instead of inspecting them manually. Right, so eventually you're gonna have to replace all of the lights down there. Yes. Yeah. All right, and the other question I have is the, the Solmass Mill site part, you know, that's in a section five, I guess it is called. I'm just curious, why would we go and develop that now when the unknown what's gonna happen there? Will the developer put that path in? Can you get him to do it? Why would we sort of spend money on that now? Developer could be a him or a her. Yes. Um, <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> Just a note. They... Uh, thank you for that question, Randy. Um, so that plant, that portion of the path is actually not out for tender um, because we are in process to find um, a developer for the SOMAS lands. We have already completed our expression of interest portion. Um, we did get 16 submissions to that. Um, we are just about to put out our request for qualifiers um, and we recognize that a part of our development agreement could be the developer um, constructing the path themselves. So that portion of path is not currently out for tender. We are holding on yeah. that. Okay. And one more question. That's all I have. The um, Gertrude and Pemberton redoing the intersection. You have two crosswalks there still. Are you having activated one overhead activated light or one on each crosswalk or... Have you thought about just going down to one crosswalk? Rob. That's all. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We're actually going to uh, traffic signals to, because okay. of the traffic volumes and the speeds yes. we see there, a traffic uh, uh, like flashing beacon pedestrian activated yeah. isn't safe enough. Right. So it warrants an actual full traffic signal. And with that is it's cost the same whether you have a crossing on either side or not. It's just the paint cost for the, the north side and the south side, but the dominant location for crossing is intended to be that south side where the park is. Right, okay. So fully activated crossings, lights. All right. Thank you. Danielle. Through you, Madam Mayor, we do have another um, attendee wishing to speak online. Hi, Bob, you should be able to speak uh, now if you unmute your mic. Hi, Bob. We're just having a little trouble hearing you. Um, if it's possible, uh, you can also pop your question down um, in the chat and we can try to read it out for you. Danielle, if that's Mr. Kanegeezer, he did have two more questions on the back page. I'm wondering if that's what he's wanting to ask. <laughs> Through you, Madam Chair, I'm not actually sure, but um, if you'd like, we can we can read some of those. <laughs> so we have question five here. Um, where does the accord or other in lieu of taxes from the Port Authority show up in the financial plan? Thank you, Andrew. Uh, within the financial plan, the, uh, the, there is no accord with the Port Authority. What it is is uh, their payment in lieu of taxes. And with that, it, it's in line 14760. Um, we should move that out into the PILT section, but historically, that's where it's landed. And with that, the PILT payment also includes uh, payments that we transfer to the ACRD, BC Assessment, and uh, the school district, uh, as, as that is required as of the local taxes. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Danielle. So question six here. Uh, the 2023 major industry assessment is $87,650,800 and light industry is $20,284,200. As these have not decreased from 2022, I assume these assessments include the former SOMAS properties which the city now owns. Are any 2023 taxes from the SOMAS properties included in heavy industry tax share of $5,185,814 or light industry share of $703,624? Thank you, Andrew. 
Madam Chair, uh, with the property, ta uh, property assessment for major industry, that change actually occurred in 2021. So uh, the city did not take possession of the property, but it was uh, it was removed from the roll, so it was no longer taxable. Uh, so there is no uh, taxation from uh, the SOMAS property at this time because city properties are exempt from property taxation. Thank you. Were there any further questions? There was one follow-up, um, kind of a secondary email that was included as well from um, Bob Candice here. Um, not really questions so much as comments. Um, if you would like me to read out, uh, otherwise we can leave them as comments. Sure. So I have attempted to follow the city plans for new trails in the 2023 to 2028 financial plans with emphasis on the plans for 2023 and 2024. I have read the March 13th council agenda, the council summary, and the article in the AV News. Please confirm if my understanding is correct. One, plan a trail sidewalk path to connect Victoria Key to Roger Park to then connect to the Scott Kenny Trail along Roger Creek. This includes upgrades to the road intersection at Pemberton and Gertrude. Two, plan a trail from Roger Creek Park to Roger Street along the railway. Three, plan to mark the sidewalk along Roger Street from the railway crossing to the Roger Stamp intersection with directional signs to form a loop trail to or from Victoria Key. Four, plan a trail sidewalk pathway from Harbor Key to Tai Landing and the new waterfront trail at the SOMAS site. This new construction would be at or adjacent to the railway, the station and Fisherman's Harbor. And five, there are no current plans to create a trail along the railway track from Roger Street to Tai Landing. Thank you, and Rob, you can confirm that, but I believe that's all correct. <laughs> Thank you, Rob says yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, we had Monica up next. Sorry. Um, about the train station, I have a question about the water tower. Is that roof going to be fixed as well? Thank you. Andrew, I'm not sure if we... I don't think there's any planned work to the water tower. It all belongs to the train, uh, to, the, to the architecture, so you can't leave that. Andrew? Uh, Madam Chair, so at this time, I, I don't believe that is the case. I don't, there's there's no plan for any uh, any work on that that tower. I would like to say that the train station and the water tower it all belongs together, uh, and it's a beautiful architecture feature. Now the 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 federal government has just. Um, come out a couple of days ago that um, the rail line is given to the indigenous people, which means that one day we can work and develop the rail and we should focus also that one day it could be part of the port. But immediately if we could get these few things done with the port, for example, with the first birth, that is okay, and get the scanner, then we can get products in, then we can get some funds into the community, then everything else will go start rolling. Now, here are beautiful old um, train cars on the other side. Maybe build on that side a train museum. Because when ship starts coming, we have to think about in the future, then people are drawn to um, the history of Port Alberni. And, and so it could be a beautiful museum on the other side and just fix up these trains. And uh, there's a lot of them. I've been walking around. And, and so it's, it's natural. Now, we could also focus on a virtual train that is people that don't have vehicles and can't afford because 
our budget and everything is going, we are, everybody is starting to struggle. So a virtual train is something that goes with wheels. And it could start from the other side of the train station. Everything could be focused there. And, and it could take from Port Alberni to Nanaimo and Victoria, for example. And that could be for, um, for people that need to go to work or whatever. So I just have these ideas and, and I think we need also, I have one more point is that we need one more, you know, industry. So we have the lumber and we have the port and, but what I also see is the world is getting quite unstable. Maybe we have to also focus, I bet Biden is coming now and see Prime Minister Trudeau. He's going to ask for ammunition or guns or that Canada is going to help USA because we have been very passive. Maybe Port Alberni could focus on that as their third industry. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monica. Are there any other members of the public who would like to speak? Roland. Um, just to follow up on the water tower, that's kind of disappointing. To, I actually mistakenly presumed that that was going to be sort of part of the re and re down there. It, uh, echoing Monica's comment, it is a kind of a unique uh, architectural feature. I think there's only one other extant water tower on the island is at Parksville. I realize it's not original, but I'm pretty sure Gordy Blake and Soupy Campbell are probably cursing up in heaven right now, hearing that their water tower that they 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 renovated a long, long time ago because the IHS put a lot of work into renovating that, and that it's um it's kind of a shame to be letting it sort of go. Are it's, we gonna are we, we going are not, to? We're not aware of any work needed to the water tower at this point in time. So um, it's, we have there's had, some so we've had rough um, patches on it. We've had assessments um, done to the building specifically. Um, and if there's work required to the water tower, I'm not saying it's not being done. I'm saying it has not been brought to council as a budget item. So um, something we could follow up and ask our director of parks, recreation and heritage on. So it's on the radar. It's just, you're not, we're not going to let it get to the point of massive deterioration and, okay. The priority has been the um, the building itself um, because um, there were structural issues that needed to be repaired with it. So the water tower, um, if there's fixing up that needs to be done to it, um, doesn't present the same risk as a building that people are gonna be going into. So that's why the building's been prioritized. Okay, and through you, Madam Chair, to the Director of Engineering, just as a curiosity thing, the last report, um, I think, it was, believe it was last Monday, actually, the, the, the RCM, on the loop trails. Um, trails are a parks and recreation thing, and I realize there's some engineering involved, and obviously with the intersections and so on, maybe. But I was just curious why it was more of an engineering report than a parks and recreation report. Is it because there's so much uh, intersection, interfacing, is that why the director of engineering ended up, basically he's running, it appears to be on this project, uh, running the, the, the show. Rob. I, basically because it's a capital project, capital projects uh, live in the engineering department. So when we look at specific projects, we'll see if we have capacity and then we'll take it on. And we took on this project even though it is going to be owned and operated by Parks and Rec. So we, we keep the Director of Parks and our previous Parks Manager involved in all our decisions because they're going to end up owning and operating that infrastructure. Okay. Um, and then with a controlled intersection, and I understand that's a fully controlled traffic stop, timed lights at one block north of the busiest intersection in the city. Has there been a traffic flow study on how that's going to look like, particular during peak periods. And part two of this question is that Johnson Road, arguably, uh, just with the flow traffic going back and forth from the coast, and I see near misses at intersections along Johnson Road all the time. And if this particular intersection now warrants a fully controlled traffic signal, I realize Johnson Road is Ministry of Highways. 
um, and the city, I guess, would have to petition for those. But I'm just curious about sort of some of the thinking around the lights. Before you answer that, I'll just say that um, we have been advocating to the province for pedestrian improvements to Johnston Road. They may not look the same as they would on a city street because it is, of course, a highway and the province does have control. But the province has done a preliminary study of um, pedestrian improvements that could be done to lower Johnston Road at our request. Um, none of that has been put to capital yet because our focus with the province has been on the River Road um, and Beaver Creek intersection. Um, we're getting close on that work, obviously, so um, we will be circling back to them on the preliminary study that was done with options for pedestrian improvements to lower Johnston. So it's definitely a concern as well, Rob. I was just going to say that uh, we had a transportation engineer look at the connectivity of, the, of both those intersections and it warrants a traffic signal. So it would be a matter of coordinating those two signals together to make sure one doesn't turn green and the other one turns red type of thing so it's a flow through. Okay, yeah, I was thinking that it might work that way. And the last thing is, I'm just curious, perhaps the director of um, uh, Parks and Recreation Heritage just couldn't be here tonight for whatever reason, but um, I did ask on February 6th whether all professional staff would be here for the very reason that we've encountered tonight so that we could get answers. The public are coming out and they're, we're trying to get information and then we don't get the answer, we have to wait. And, and um, so in fairness to the Ligares and, and the softball organization, and I was curious as well, Parks and Rec is a, a, a big part of the city and it's sort of, we're all sort of, we don't have, we can't give, it, can't give you any answers tonight. And yet we're having a discussion of, of um, a multi-million dollar budget and it's a, I'm just being honest here, it's a little frustrating from the public's perspective in that, that um, we are trying to participate and respectfully, but uh, we, gotta, we gotta speed this process up of getting answers to the public. This, it's, um, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't think it's satisfactory that these folks have to go and wait more time and um, uh, the department heads are responsible for multi-million dollar portions of the multi-million dollar total budget. So I really think they all need to be here during these discussions as, as much as practically possible, obviously medical emergencies and so on. But, and I'm not asking you to divulge where the director is, but I'm just, just going to put that out there. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Or Thank you for that, Roland. Chair. Thank you. Are there questions from other members of the public? And so Joseph, and then we'll go to the member of the public online after. Hi, my name's Joseph. I'm a resident of Port Alberni. And I didn't really come prepared for this tonight, so it's going to seem a little disjointed, but hopefully the question comes forward and it's understood and I get an answer on it. Um, I think the current budget and what's planned for the upcoming budget for planting of trees is, uh, I, I think a number comes to mind, $76,000. Hmm? 76500 Right, and that's for current or is that for the upcoming budget? Upcoming year, this upcoming, year. Thank you, thank you. And the question I have is I've been speaking to, for the number of years now, to a number of people that have held different positions and then left or recently, uh, Willa Thorpe also retired, I believe, and Amy Needham, I believe it was. Willa has not retired. She does work Willa. for the city. Um, and AD, Amy Needham um, did leave her position. Right. Okay. So Willa still, you said? Yeah, Willa is our Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Sorry, I didn't know there was a change. So <laughs> so thank you for that clarification. Yeah, no, I missed that one. So my question was, there was supposed to, um, I was talking to them regarding a report on, uh, they were going to do a presentation to Mayor and Council regarding uh, damage to residential properties by current trees that are city-owned trees. And uh, that was... She said that would happen last year in March or April of last year. It kept getting put off. There's other things that came up. It was never uh, presented. And uh, so I'm just curious on that, if that's still in the process of being looked at for, uh, for damage, because uh, apparently there was somebody put a claim in, and it's an ongoing thing where there may be residents that have damaged the property. They're putting claims in to, to uh, compensate for damage caused by trees that have been planted years ago. And uh, so I'm wondering if that's still being looked at because of the upcoming budget. I'm just wondering where those funds will come from for future claims that may come in and uh, if that's going to be in the, where that money would come from or if it's something that needs to be included in because um, 
uh, as I say, that was something they were going to present and and for looking at for potential damage being caused by by current trees that are in that have been there for years. And uh, yeah, so I'm just curious on that. I know we've got a budget for tree planting, but it, where does that money come from? And is it something that's being looked at? I know we're doing, you know, looking at different things and, and saying, well, we're doing a review or something to say what, what needs to be done, what needs to be looked at, and then therefore planning a budget for that. So uh, where would that money be coming from? And is it being looked uh, into? Thank you. Um... Mike, I'm not sure if you can start with that question or Andrew. Sure, uh, through the chair. Um, uh, all municipalities uh, usually are insured for any claims. So when the claims come forward for any uh, tree damage, it would be assessed by, I believe in our case, it would be MIA uh, would look into it. And uh, sometimes uh, staff would have the answer beforehand and uh, it would be covered through our insurance. Uh, sounds good. So thank you for that. Thank you for that answer. And I've also been told that instead of looking at tree to tree, if it's an entire neighborhood where the trees are about the same age, the city was going to look into looking at the whole street and what might be done with that. That's something that who knows when that'll happen. So it sounds like it's happening on, on a tree by tree basis if somebody's uh, bringing something forward. But when I spoke to city staff over the past number of years, there was this uh, consensus that, well, we'll be looking at the entire street and coming up with a recommendation on what can be done, causing damage not only to uh, residential property, but city property infrastructure that is being infected by roots and, and things within that tree. So I don't know when that would take place, when, when that might happen, when they're gonna look at an entire area and say yes, this is something we need to look at because it's not only causing damage to residential but also to infrastructure, so, yeah. Thanks for that, Joseph. And um, more likely that would be um, kind of operational work that would happen outside of the council process. Um, on a higher level, uh, council um, and through staff, um, we're all recognizing the priority of maintaining um, trees in our community, but um, more importantly, the right type of trees in our community. The city has changed their approach um, over the years significantly, of course, since some of these problem trees were planted, um, to recognizing um, which type of areas and which type of trees fit and which do not, um, in, in conjunction, of course, with different types of infrastructure. So the trees that are being planted today um, should not be trees that will um, cause infrastructure problems down the road. So um, there's been a lot of uh, thought and process go into that um, over the years and specifically um, with Amy when she was our um, manager of parks um, did a fantastic job of just really bringing that kind of infrastructure uh, mind to, um, to the right type of trees for the right location. So thank you. Are there questions from other members of the public today? Okay, okay. Um, Roland and then we'll go online. Just, just uh, uh, wondering, uh, Madam uh, Chair, through to the Director of Finance, uh, is it possible, I, I, I love these charts, could you, it, it, it's a really e easy thing to interpret, the, the, the revenue sources and the expenses, so is it possible to have that maybe inserted at one of the final documents just so, that, so that we've got it for posterity? The, yeah. Madam Chair, so, uh, I believe the resident is looking at the insert from the that's from, tax notice. That's from the, the yeah. last last year's, yeah, but yeah. I, so, I, it's not, yeah. So what we normally do is we put that in with the final tax notice as part of our communications to the public. Uh, by all means, if we could provide it as we wrap up our financial plan, absolutely. So Perfect. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Danielle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so this, I, I'm not sure if that's just because of the platform, but it does say it's from anonymous. So it, it is from one of our attendees online. Um, so an expression of interest to put in a f new fish processing plant was submitted. The only suitable waterfront land is controlled by the port authority and city. A new fish plant would employ over a hundred workers and boost the value of seafood hundreds of local fishermen rely on. Would the city be open to subdividing a portion of the SOMAS lands similar to San Francisco, Boston, Seattle waterfronts? 
Thank you. Um, so I'm not aware of any expression of interest that has been put in specifically for that, though it might have come through um, the uh, SOMAS expression of interest process. Um, we are not at a point yet of being prepared to um, subdivide a portion of the SOMAS lands, and we actually cannot subdivide a portion of the SOMAS lands yet, um, as we are in um, process on um, some of the remedial work that has to be done there, um, which has been highlighted tonight already as a result of some of the questions around um, the use of the $650,000 in the budget. Um, the city does have a grant application in for a million dollars, um, which our goal would be to get to a point where we can subdivide. And um, we do recognize that uh, we were overwhelmed by the uh, amount of responses for fantastic businesses um, and overall developers that came forward through that expression of interest process. So we know that there is a lot of interest um, from businesses that want to set up today and employ people in our community to developers who want to master plan the whole site. Um, we were thrilled with the level of response that we got. And now we're working through the process of, of how to get there. Um, and hopefully, and we're very optimistic about our grant that we hope to uh, receive so that we are able to um, capture some of that interest that is um, surrounding the site and, and bring it to fruition as soon as possible. Scott, is there anything you want to add? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions online? Okay, seeing none. Any other questions from members of the public? Any other questions from council? Okay, seeing none, um, we do have two pieces of correspondence um, included in our agenda in the correspondence summary. We have um, firstly a letter uh, from Lyman Jarden regarding the, Ro regarding the Roger Creek Trail extension. Um, and just wanted to recognize in there, um, Lyman uh, speaks to the financial contribution that he um, committed to several years ago um, around a piece of that. So just wanted to um, just appreciate that Lyman has been a supporter of uh, finishing off that path for a long time, um, has toured me on um, some specific areas that he would like to see us improve um, and just yeah, appreciate his, his dedication to seeing that project complete. And then we do have as well um, a question from Randy Fraser regarding creek maintenance. Would any member of council like to highlight either of those pieces of correspondence? I will just ask um, if we have a response on the creek maintenance. Rob? Thank you, Madam Chair. We actually, currently with the OCP process, we have a registered professional biologist who is evaluating all of our creeks and our habitats and trying to prioritize them for their value and looking at prioritizing how we maintain our creeks. Generally, from an engineering perspective, we look at it for maintaining the flow of water and, and reduce flooding. But there's a big part of that is also environmental and looking at professional biologists evaluating that actual habitat and, and letting us know where we should be spending our, our limited dollars to the best value. I think I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. Okay, any other comments on the correspondence from council? Councillor Douglas. Just if we, I just want to confirm something to an earlier correspondence, the letter which uh, Councillor Solder referred to. Um, well, you, I don't think you did directly, but to do with the Fire Smart, Community Fire Smart. Uh, I just want to confirm through you to our um, Director of Finance answered that. I believe the answer was that we participate in the Fire Smart through our role in the ACRD. And so that is being looked after. I just wanted to confirm that. Uh, so within the ACRD, the, the Alberni Valley uh, uh, planning, emergency planning, is a service area which the city participates in. So the ACRD board is the one that applies for grants within the service area, which is including the city and, of course, Beaver Creek, Beaufort, uh, Cherry Creek, Sprout Lake. So. Thank you. So I believe that um, looks after the concern that the letter writer wrote in about. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, would somebody like to move adjournment? Second. Moved by Councillor Solda, seconded by Councillor Douglas. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. And thank you to the members of the public who uh, came and spoke tonight and who participated online as well.